the Philippine government would not put in any investment funds but the following. 1. Land and Export Processing Zone or IPSA, 2. Tax and Duty-Free Operation, and 3. Security of Investments with Government Guarantee. There are several lands belonging to the government along the areas of proposed sites. The law on export processing zone can be used to declare selected sites as EPSA the law providing a built-in tax and duty-free arrangements with the government. The security of investments are provided for by the Omnibus Investment Act, the Investments Law, the Constitution of the Philippines, past, present, and proposed, guarantee the constitutional rights to properties and due process, including just compensation. The government must guarantee enforcement of these laws. Foreign investors have been informed that all funds would have to be provided by them on the following items. 1. Funds for research and development. 2. Mobilization costs and recruitment. 3. Engineering, development and construction costs. 4. Equipment pumping, storage, loading facilities and other industrial project costs. The 20% production sharing revenue would be set aside and be used for security, management, administration, salaries and wages, materials, supplies, transportation and housing personnel, food, medical supplies, and other operational costs in order to preserve and not disturb the 40% production revenue sharing for each of the government and the investor shares. By maintaining this production revenue sharing ratio, future disagreements and irritants are avoided. A built-in protection for the government and the investors, which is strongly recommended by the proponent on the basis of the Aramco experience. WHO buys or sells all deuterium produced. Using the Aramco experience since the 1950s for rapid development, the foreign investors shall have the first option to buy or sell the daily production of deuterium at preset price of 7 US dollars per barrel. This would give a marketable gas station retail price of only PHP 0.90 or 45 US cents per liter or 15 US cents per gallon of Lee Henry fuel from deuterium. In effect, the investors buy after discounting their 40% sharing or at 40% less, at only 4 US dollars and 20 cents per barrel giving them more flexibility on their international market pricing policies. This hydrogen fuel gives twice the mileage economy of gasoline or LPG slash LNG fed cars. Old gasoline fed cars can be converted to Lee Henry fuel used by utilizing the same conversion kits used in converting gasoline fed engines to LPG slash LNG fed units. Brand new cars have been made to use LPG slash LNG fuel more than 10 years ago and the same car engines can use Lee Henry fuel. In Japan and Canada, there are about 78% brand new cars running on LNG or LPG. The same brand new units can use Lee Henry fuel, which is more economical fuel than any other available in the international market today. Hydrogen fuel does not emit any pollutants or harmful carbon monoxide but steam or water vapor. Proponent and Associated Investors this proponent conducted intensive studies on research, development, Philippine Investments Law, Corporation Code, Organization, Security, Management, Administration, Operation, Marketing, including the breakthrough in pump technology with his associates. This breakthrough in pump technology will use hydrodynamic power and pumping deuterium from more than 7,000 meters below sea level. Hydrogen from water was predicted by Jules Verne in 1874 to be the fuel of the future. During World War II, Germany used V-2 rocket bombs propelled by hydrogen. Now, Dr. Jacob Vigelison discovered that at room temperature or under atmospheric condition, deuterium atoms are electrolyzed naturally out of water in the form of hydrogen gas. This natural phenomenal process needs no expensive electric power consuming electrolysis to artificially separate hydrogen from oxygen in water. What is deuterium? Deuterium is heavy water or hydrogen water without oxygen. This is obtained from the deep trenches of the world and the world's largest deposit of deuterium is in the Philippines, a big deposit of 868 miles long, 52 miles at widest point, and 3 miles at deepest point, replenished by nature 24 hours a day after deuterium traveled more than 12,000 kilometers from Central America to the Philippines through the span of the Pacific Ocean when planet Earth turns on its axis from west to east in unending perpetual motion. Uses of Deuterium Deuterium is used in the production of hydrogen, Lee Henry fuel now used in Canada, America, Germany and some parts of Sweden to provide fuel for cars, trucks, jet planes, etc. including solid hydrogen for spacecrafts Challenger and Columbia. Deuterium can replace gasoline, LPG, LNG, focus, etc. in powering all types of internal combustion engines. It does not emit pollutants or any harmful carbon monoxide and does not cause any environmental problems because it is in the water family as emissions are nothing but water vapor or steam. Deuterium as hydrogen fuel can be used for cooking, lighting, heating, and as heavy water fuel for reactors and electric power generation. 
Why does deuterium electrolyze out of water in the form of hydrogen gas? It electrolyzes out of water in the form of hydrogen gas because deuterium is concentrated hydrogen with element symbol, H2. Hydrogen mass of 2 is distinguished from H2O in water, subjected to the pressure of water mass at the ocean floor of about 10,000 pounds per square inch or more because deuterium obtained from depths of more than 7,000 meters below sea level and at more than 10,000 pounds per square inch pressure causes the oxygen in water to disengage separate and escape naturally from hydrogen leaving only hydrogen isotopes to combine with other hydrogen isotopes and forming deuterium under pressure. And deuterium under pressure, when exposed to room temperature or atmospheric condition, forms or electrolyzes naturally into hydrogen gas, in the same manner that LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, and LNG, liquefied natural gas, in liquid state transform into gas after fusion process with air in the atmosphere the moment LPG or LNG tank valves are turned on or opened. By taking out impurities from deuterium, Lee Henry fuel is produced by special simple process at very, very low cost known to this proponent and his associates. Cheap hydrogen will reactivate all idled hydrogen based industries internationally affected by high petroleum costs, and this will boost food, chemical, and metal industries worldwide. Proposal to the Philippine Government and Foreign Investors Through intensive research and development on oceanographic data and processes with foreign associates, the proponent discovered that concentrated hydrogen exists only about 1 cm thick in every 3,000 m deep of water mass at the ocean floor. Because deuterium more than twice the weight of ordinary water, it sinks and in the process, oxygen separates naturally from hydrogen when the pressure becomes about 10,000 pounds per square inch or more. The usual ocean floor depth ranges between 2,000 m to 3,000 m. With the Philippine Trench at 7,000 m to 10,500 m deep, Deuterium is naturally trapped through the ages untapped by man through this day, replenished by nature through the north equatorial current tidal flow from more than 12,000 kilometers away in Central America to the Philippines hitting the Philippine Trench. Directly perpendicular dash. The one and only trench with the widest and longest resource flow of deuterium in the whole world. This proponent presented in March 1986 the deuterium project to the Philippines and American governments and his desire to help the people of the Philippines and its government, by introducing internationally accepted production sharing scheme. This is the 40-40-20 production sharing scheme. 40% of daily production revenue goes to the government, 40% goes to the investors, and 20% is retained or set aside to cover the cost of security, operation, management, administration, salaries and wages, material supplies, repairs and maintenance, and other operation costs. The U.S. government sent an investment mission last June 1986 to the Philippines and initial conferences were held with Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, of Washington, D. C., USA with the participation of government officials and private businessmen in Manila. A meeting with Trade and Industry Minister Jose Concepcion was held during President Corazon C. Aquino's trip to USA last September 1986. Another meeting is scheduled this December 1986 in Washington, D. C. With Deputy Minister Thomas Alcantara, Major U. S. Investors are expected to attend and participate. OPIC Mission has scheduled a series of February 1987 conferences in Manila with Deuterium Project as the banner line of publication agenda. International investors are expected to attend the technical presentation conferences in Manila in 1987. The Japanese group of investors is composed of the top eight industrial companies, which will form a consortium to undertake a 4 million barrels capacity per day of deuterium production. A Saudi group visited the Philippines in September and October 1986 and was interested in a 2 million barrels daily production capacity of deuterium. With the two top U.S. oil companies interested in a 6 million barrels capacity, Japanese investors in a 4 million barrels capacity, and the Saudi group in a 2 million barrels daily production capacity, the total respective investors' inquiries so far received is 12 million barrels daily production. The Philippines can supply all the requirements of the whole world in deuterium as hydrogen fuel and as hydrogen for food, chemical, and metal industries worldwide. Transfer of high technology. Hydrogen from deuterium is the fuel of the future available in the Philippines. This needs the transfer of high technology in pumping and refining processes, the proponent has developed with an American pump engineer a new breakthrough in pump technology using hydrodynamic power by employing the ramjet suction technology in the same manner that jet planes use the ramjet propulsion to propel heavy loaded jet planes today. Storage system will use the underground tunnel type tanks in lieu of the surface tank farm. Loading system will use the same types as those for LPG and LNG systems. Rule of thumb investments. 
subject to the refinements of cost data, project line items and other factors, the rule of thumb investment estimates is about 200 million US dollars for every 1 million barrels daily production capacity, a very much lower investment slash capacity ratio than petroleum production. At 12 million barrels per day capacity, the estimated total investment is 2 billion 400 million US dollars or 2.4 billion US dollars, the single largest industrial investment in the Philippines. Employment opportunities? As the feasibility study on the project has been started, this proponent estimates that the deuterium project's combined production capacities will employ no less than 350,000 personnel of international pay rates and allowances for unskilled, semi-skilled technical, and professional levels from the Philippines. Less than 2,000 foreign nationals will also be employed on the transfer of technology. The type of operation is the same as those in the Middle East petroleum production facilities, with the same pay rates so as not to disturb international energy pricing and economy of costs. Benefits to the government and the Filipino people. At 12 million barrels per day capacity priced at 7 US dollars per barrel, this is 84 million US dollars per day or 30.66 billion US dollars per year, enough to wipe out all existing foreign debts of the government in one year, revenue wise, in foreign exchange. Public works, private construction, economic and financial booms are expected to happen in the Philippines in the same manner as those which happened in the Middle East and financial centers of the world from 1974 to 1984 with everybody earning their respective comfortable livelihood, while pricing basic prime necessities at reasonable and affordable levels. Deuterium and hydrogen fuel is the final and lasting hope of the Filipino people and the government to be great again. This untapped source of energy supply will make the Philippines one of the richest countries of the world.